I'm Chris Thomas, and this is Masterclass. Many years ago, a, a former colleague of mine, a guy named Bob Golden, uh, suggested that the movement, this movement called Agiuke, was in particular a defense against somebody grabbing your top knot. I actually thought that was very, very brilliant because what he was doing was he, he was interpreting a movement in a very pragmatic way that was culturally appropriate because the warriors at the time that karate was developed had top knots. They had top knots in Japan, they had top knots in Okinawa, and in China they had that long braid in the back. So everyone had that hair thing that you could hold on to. And so it would make sense that there would be techniques specifically to defend against what would make a great attack. Grab the person by the hair and throw them down. When I was in India, I was teaching um, a class that everyone was a Gojiru practitioner and I thought, oh, well, you know, uh, one of their very basic katas is called Gekisai. It begins by turning and performing Agioke and then you step forward and you throw a punch. And I thought, well, I'll just teach Bob's technique to them because I just really thought it was a brilliant insight on his part. I, the sound is not great because Mumbai is very, very noisy. You can hear street sounds and I'm, I'm actually having to yell and so that affects the audio quality. I apologize for that. Uh, but I just thought this was worth sharing. And so here it is, a little bit of master class from Mumbai, India. So, Heart six was down here, right? If I slide up along that same line, the heart meridian, halfway, about where this muscle ends, there's a point right here. This is a hit point, so when I grab it, I don't get much of an effect. Now, so here's the deal. The point is here, but let's say he grabs my arm. The point is now here. Do you see how my finger tracks with his arm? My finger is tracking with his arm. So in this position right here, if I want to hit that point, my arm has to be at this angle. And it will just pop right off. See? All right? Okay, but if I go this way, nothing. Or if I go this way, ouch, that hurts. The point is here. It's about a 45 degree angle. Okay? Boom, comes right off. Now I want you to see something. In Japan and in Okinawa, the warriors all had a top knot, a top knot, and so they would grab the top knot. So if he's grabbing my head to grab my top knot, this is where the pressure point is. This point is right here, okay? Here's where the point is. It's right here. So the angle, if his arm is down here, the angle is this way to hit the point. So now if we ride that up, so he's grabbing, now the angle is this angle. Do you see what I'm, do you see the angle? This angle, this angle, what am I doing? Age uke. So the kata gekisai teaches if somebody grabs your hair, you hit this pressure point to release their grip because that's what it does, it causes the hand to open up and come off. But you don't just go like this, you also have to do tai sabaki. My tai sabaki is this. I do them at the same time. Then I take this arm this way and I step forward and I punch him in the head. In other words, somebody grabs my hair, I go one, two. Gekisai teaches you the defense against that. And then here's what Gekisai does next. So this is how katas are often put together. Kata says, I do this because my opponent is trying to do this. See, the second move is the attack that the first move defends. So in this kata, it teaches you how to attack top knot and how to defend against an attack to top knot. That's what Gekisai does. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I know, it's really interesting. All top knots got cut off starting in, in uh, 1870, but there were still some holdouts as late as uh, World War II, the mid-20th the mid century. No more top knots, uh, except the 
Oh, Gucci Sensei still wears a top knot, but not very many. There's still a few top knots out there. But basically, this, this, this is the old meaning, the old meaning. And it was very, this was actually very basic because it was one of the first things that people would learn, grab the hair, take them down. And so the first defense was against the first most obvious attack. Okay, so I'd like you to try that with each other. Let someone grab your hair, hit the point and turn, just like you're doing Gekasai, grab their arm, take a step forward and throw a punch towards their head. Okay, do that. He's gonna punch me, so he grabs me and pulls me into a punch. So let's start out with, if I take this out of the way and he just punches, all right? As he punches, if I step in towards him, into the punch, and I do agayuke, look, my upper arm checks the punch and my hand strikes his head. Got it? Now, if this is here and he wants to punch me, I do this, look, see how I checked with my arm, but then right now, now I'm checking with his arm. Now I pull this to my hip. Now I'm gonna punch. Now my angle is interesting. If I go 45 degrees, I can punch him in the head, but I can also do this. Hey, remember there's a rub point right here, triple warmer. I can use that. My punch can be not a punch, but in fact, an arm bar. Isn't that interesting? I, I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope that that gives you an idea for other techniques, for us, no top knot. No one's going to grab my hair. I don't have enough. But we can still find culturally, historically meaningful applications for these movements that make sense in our world and our culture. Thanks for watching. Now go train.